Apple just dropped one of their most famous products. Apple just killed the iPod Touch. It's the last device in the iPod's product line. We got one because we want to talk to you about it. And we also want to talk to you about today's sponsor, us. Hive Parts is our in-house reseller of aftermarket accessories for your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. We test everything before we sell it, and most of our products are things we use in our own cars. Check it out at the link below. So here it is, the iPod Touch in product red, because you said it would be good for the camera. It and is it is. Look at how nice this thing looks. Like, I don't under, I, I really am failing to understand here why they decided to kill these. None of these devices made it past their seventh generation for some reason. No iPod has ever made it past its seventh generation. We decided to go out and get one of these mainly because this is the device that made me fall in love with tech and made me fall in love with learning that I can just kind of do anything I want and make a device my own. I was curious because they had 10 of these, but by the time that I was actually in the process of checking this out and literally the last nine had been purchased. So there is still a want for these things, but why? We think it's a lot of just collectors trying to get in on the craze while these things are going out the door, but I think that it's actually something much different. One of the things that Jess and I were talking about is that I had actually theorized a lot of people were going in to buy these as like a last minute device, just a final upgrade for their kids who probably had one of these or had an iPad, or maybe even just music lovers in general who still wanted a device that you couldn't be interrupted on if you're just trying to have a nice music listening experience. Some people do still want a phone that isn't a phone. Personally, I think that the reasoning Apple gave for why they finally decided to kill these off is a little... Uh, they decided to go on for an entire article about how this device is replaced by everything else in their lineup. They literally even compared this thing to the HomePod Mini. The other thing that I was theorizing is that a lot of people who were in the store were honestly just buying these out of fear of not ever ha getting a chance to have one. Um, or FOMO, fear of missing out. Is what's up, it, NFTs? What's up, yeah, what's up, cryptocurrency market? How, how's your crash going? Hey, Luna. <laughs> Hi, stable coins. Oh my God. What, stable what? Stable what? So, as I was saying, Apple's reasoning kind of sucks as, for, as to why they killed these. They're great little devices, and honestly, if you just need like something to control a ton of different Apple devices in your home, these things are great. This is the cheapest device in Apple's entire lineup, or was up until the HomePod Mini. This was $280 after taxes, walking out the door. The cheapest iPhone you can currently get would be the second generation SE, I think. I don't know if they've come oh, out with that's this. Like Bucks, That's the $579. Okay. Now, mind you, this does only have 32 gigs of storage. The base edition SE has uh, 64, I think. The, the entire lineup of Apple's product, just base edition is 64. This has 32 gigs. The other reason why I think Apple decided to finally kill these off, they have one of the least secure chips in them that Apple ever made, the A10 uh, Fusion. The A10 Fusion was just a slightly upgraded version of the normal A10 that was found in the rest of the iPod lineup for the past three generations before it. And the A10 Fusion is actually still one of the uh, chips that was affected by the Checkmate exploit, which is when the device is turning on, there is a brief moment where you can inject custom code, which we'll get to that in another video that we're making about this. So stay tuned for that. I actually still have uh, on set with me here, my fifth generation iPod Touch that I got in high school. Sadly, it doesn't work. We were originally gonna use this one in the video um, and we did at the start there. Only difference, this one's blue, this one's red, and this one has a little thing on the corner for um, a wrist strap that never ended up being produced. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Just me yeah, struggling to unbox an iPod. Should I make it take longer on purpose? No. I don't think that uh, anyone who didn't know that these were from two different generations would even be able to tell if I hadn't pointed out the uh, little wrist strap thing here. Is that a fifth or a sixth gen? This is a fifth gen and this is a seventh gen. There were actually two different models of this fifth gen device, one of which was one color scheme, black and silver, didn't have a camera, didn't have Wi-Fi, and didn't have the uh, little 
wrist strap holder here. Tell me that you could tell the difference between these two. This is the same device. That one is red. Congratulations. Guess what? The insides of these are no different from each other. This is the A10. Yeah, that one is red. This is the A10. This is the A10 Fusion. That 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 yeah. that one that one is red. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I don't think that these should die. Frankly, I really loved the iPod. It was my first modern device that I had when I was a kid. Um, and honestly, it is one of the devices that I can actually trace back to, you know, leading me to this, really. Uh, it was the first device that I customized on my own, and it didn't have any phone capabilities, which meant that my parents didn't have to worry about me, you know, getting myself into legal trouble with the uh, cell phone companies or running into monetary issues if I didn't have enough to pay for a cell phone plan. But the other thing that the iPod was, and that the iPod still is, was Apple's saving grace. It was the device that brought them out of a really hard time when they first started, you know, being a company. Because the Macs weren't selling well, frankly. The first iPod and the iPhone kind of shaped smartphones today. Like, if Apple hadn't popularized a four to five inch device, fully touchscreen for everything, with basic internet capabilities, I'm pretty sure that smartphones today would look a lot different. Now, I'd love to see everyone's opinions in the comments. Some people just don't want to have a phone. They don't want to be constantly connected. Some people just want to sit down with a music library on their iPod and listen to music or play a quick little game from the App Store, that kind of thing. So, well, I think that maybe it's a good thing that this is finally not in the product line anymore. I do hope that maybe we'll get like, you know, the iPod Touch Classic in six or seven years. And I hope that if that happens, Apple starts focusing on what kind of brought the iPod to its form of popularity originally, which was an offline, really high quality music device. It should have a high quality DAC in it. It should pretty much just compete with everything that Fio makes, but it should be an Apple device. It should connect with iTunes. It should use Apple Music. Uh, and it should have internet connectivity because frankly, these devices are great for just passing to your kids on a long car ride and just letting them, you know, play a game or two, watch a movie, I don't know. Mainly for me, it's always going to be nostalgic and that's the reason why I decided to pick one up. As a final signing off, thank you to all of my subscribers who finally got us to 1K. I was pretty much on hiatus since the Switch video. It just, it means the world to me to see you know, a community like this growing. I always wanted to, you know, do this. And I hope that we can continue growing. I'm gonna hopefully really start pushing the content and really start, you know, getting things so that I can film pretty much everything I'd be doing in regards to tech. Bye now. That's it. <laughs>